We've all been in a situation where we listen to software engineers and we didn't know what they were talking about. In this video, you will learn what we mean by front-end and back-end, and I will explain a few connected technologies and how they all interact with each other. Hey Mehmet, what's the update on the user profile story? Good progress. Uh, yesterday I finished the back-end, so the API is ready. And today I will take a look at the front-end, and I think we can merge it tomorrow. I'm Leonard, Engineer Manager at Klarna, and with this video, I help you to understand your engineers better, increase your productivity, and the overall impact you can have on your product. To understand what Mehmet meant with this sentence, let's start with the frontend. The frontend is everything with which the user interacts. There are two ways how we can develop a frontend, either on your device, usually called native, or through a browser, then we call it a web application or a website. Native applications can run directly on your computer, on Windows, on macOS, or Linux, or on your phone, on iOS and Android, but even on smartwatches or TVs. For native applications, we can use a wide range of technologies to develop those frontends. If you access a software through your browser, like Chrome, Firefox, or Safari, we call it a web application. For web applications, pretty much everything is developed with three languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML is responsible for the structure of the web application or website, like the headline, text, images, or buttons. CSS adds all the styles, like the font, the font color, the font size, or the alignments of the elements. JavaScript adds the logic to a web application. While HTML and CSS are responsible for the layout, we use JavaScript to fetch the price, to check if an item is in stock, or to actually place an order once you decided to buy it. There is almost no competition of languages for web applications, because the software you are running the web application with, the browser, needs to understand the language in order to run it. Here JavaScript won the competition for the most used language for web applications and websites. So the frontend is responsible for displaying and allowing the user to interact with information, but we need to get that information from somewhere, and this is what we call the backend. Backends are usually not running directly on a user's device, but on a server. And a server is basically just someone else's computer accessible through the internet. Instead of buying physical computers to use as servers, servers are usually rented as services from Amazon, Google, or Microsoft. For backends, we have many more languages as options to develop them, because we don't need to standardize them to be able to run them in a the browser. We can choose the operating system and the environment on the server to be able to use languages like C Sharp, Java, Python, or JavaScript, and many more. If you want to learn more about those languages, I will make a future video where I explain them in more detail and what they are usually used for. Even though JavaScript is not the most used language for backends, it is a very popular choice because it can run on both frontend and backend, and software engineers don't need to learn multiple languages in order to develop both. The backend's job is to process, retrieve, or prepare data for the frontend. The backend is also where most of the business logic lives. If you have complex algorithms, data preparation, or multiple data sources to combine, that's usually part of the backend. The backend usually doesn't store data, though. This is the job of a database. A database is a software we use to reliably store our data in a structured way for easy access and storage. Here, the backend retrieves information with a query language, SQL, a simple acronym for Structured Query Language. Even though there are many more technologies and languages developed over the last years to store and retrieve data, this is enough to understand the basics. But we need to talk about one last thing. How do we transfer information between the different components of a system? Now we know what the different roles of the front-end, back-end and database are. And if we listen to software engineers, they usually talk about an API, an application programming interface. The API is just a contract of how different parts of a system communicate with each other. Software engineers create so-called endpoints, documented in the API, that can be used to retrieve data, for example, from the backend. An endpoint can be called from the frontend in a very similar way to how we visit a website. We need to know the name of the website and type it into our browser. Here we can add a path, which indicates that we are interested in the product, for example. But instead of receiving a website as a response, API endpoints usually just return data, which can be used by the frontend. Another endpoint could be called user, where the frontend can retrieve all the information about the user from the backend. While the API mainly introduces a structure on how the different parts of a system communicate, it also adds a layer of security. 
all endpoints and what they return needs to be explicitly defined, and they can check whether a user is allowed to retrieve the information or not. The simplest way to think about it is that the front end also needs to authenticate itself to the back end, like a user needs to enter a username and a password into a website. That was a lot in one video, but if we now listen to the initial sentence again, I hope it makes a bit more sense. Hey Mehmet, what's the update on the user profile story? Good progress. Uh, yesterday I finished the backend, so the API is ready. And today I will take a look at the frontend, and I think we can merge it tomorrow. If you have more topics or sentences you don't understand, please comment them under this video and I can maybe make a future video about them. Thank you for watching until the end. If you don't want to miss any of my future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel.